Uh, so whenever I have chats with newbies who are jumping into Bitcoin mining and they're comparing Bitcoin mining as an investment thesis, difficulty is always what they get caught up on. They could they never can wrap their head around it. They can never understand it. And explaining it to them is really tough. And even when you pull out like a brains calculator and say like, just a simple input, put it here. We can't even get that far. It's like too tough. And, and Lily, in your report, you talked about how there's been a constant demand for mining Bitcoin. And uh, you can see that in the network difficulty. And that kind of backs up the idea that Bitcoin isn't going away anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, I, I may just be forgetting, but I didn't see it a ton in your report as well. I'm wondering how you guys both explain difficulty to people who are looking at Bitcoin mining as an investment thesis. And then a second corollary to that, how do you guys kind of choose to model it? Are you, do you guys create multiple models? Do you guys kind of create a liberal one, a conservative one, one in between? Uh, Lily, I'm gonna start with you on that question, just about network difficulty and Bitcoin mining. Okay, yeah, so like we know that when difficulty goes up, profitability for miners goes down. And the way I'd kind of explain this to newer people is I would say, you know, new Bitcoin has to be injected into the supply and it's injected into the supply every 10 minutes. And that time like must be maintained because that's like part of the scarcity aspect of, of Bitcoin. So basically, like if it takes less than 10 minutes, then the difficulty has to go up and vice versa. I don't think this like matters too much for like a smaller like retail retail miner. Like, cause their, their goal is to just like acquire Bitcoin. You're acquiring Bitcoin as long as you're doing it and it's still more profitable than buying at spot. I don't think there's a huge issue, but for larger miners who are like competing with each other, like Marathon or Riot, like there, these like incremental uh, difficulty adjustments will matter more. Hash rate's gonna go up no matter what. Like we've mm -hmm. seen that, like we've seen how fast it's recovered from, you know, China unplugging their miners and that's not even the Chinese miners coming back online. These are miners from contracts being fulfilled from last year. So I feel like that's not, that's not really a terrible ask. Like, okay, sure, you might make less money, mm -hmm. but the network is more secure as a result and that cash flow is more guaranteed. So I, I kind of like give them that perspective. Interesting. Brandon, I want to say a lot of the same question to you. Probably no need to repeat it because I was a little verbose on the first time, but uh, difficulty, Bitcoin mining and real estate. Yeah, I, I li really like Lily's response. I think I try to keep it as simple as possible when it when it comes to explaining like the difficulty or at least network cash rate growth. Um, a way that I like to explain it is it's kind of like it's your piece of the pie at the end of the day, right? It's really lucrative. Like the pie that you currently have is really lucrative, right? And so there are more people that actively want a piece as well. And so as more and more machines come online, you're gonna see a diminishing marginal return um, for the, the value of that hash rate. But I also think it's kind of important to delineate between um, you know, your, your mining revenue in dollar terms and then your mining revenue in, in Bitcoin terms. Um, because there, there are two strategies, right? Like if you're, if you're a retail miner, um, you're really just focused on most likely just earning in Bitcoin terms. And so I think it's fair to assume that, you know, you're like the, the amount of stats you earn per terahash will always decline over time. Most, most likely, most likely. Um, and, and that's fair, which is also why it's, it's best to try to get machines online as quickly as possible. Um, and just understand that if network cash rate were to go down, you know, you're going to have a larger piece of that pie. So you're going to be able to stack more Bitcoin as a result. Um, and then on the flip side, if you're thinking about this in terms of in, in dollar terms, of course, Bitcoin's price is the real driver, the real driver at the end of the day. So if Bitcoin's price simply outpaces network cash rate growth, you know, you could still continue to make money or a larger amount of money, even if network cash rate is going up. But just kind of thinking about it as like, what's your, you know, percent of that pie overall? That's a that's a great point. I, I did want to basically say exactly what Brandon said. Uh, I think it's, you know, a, a lot of uh, newer retail miners tend to focus on difficulty and like uh, in many ways appropriately so like difficulty is a pretty important metric um, but you know difficulty isn't the the whole picture there uh, and I think you know whenever I talk to about mining to new miners or people who are interested in becoming miners um, you kind of have to look at price and difficulty in tandem basically exactly why Brandon just explained because you know if difficulty goes up a lot but 
price on a percentage basis outpaces it, you're still making more money than you were a month ago or whatever time frame you're measuring. And similarly, the inverse, if difficulty drops, uh, but the price drops less on a percentage basis than difficulty, you're, you're still more profitable than you were a month ago. Um, and like that's the beauty of the hash price metric that I know a bunch of people at Galaxy and at Luxor and on our team and everyone else is trying to popularize because in my opinion, it's like one of the single most important metrics in properly understanding and maintaining your um, generally dollar denominated Bitcoin mining operation. Um, and so it, focusing only on difficulty really can do you a disservice uh, analysis wise in terms of managing your mining operation. Uh, and I think we've seen that some of the conversations I ha we've, I'm sure all four of us have had on Twitter, we've seen that over the past uh, six to eight months. Um, as difficulty went up a lot, uh, but it, it like almost week over week, every week during that period, price outpaced it and miners were making more money than they were even as difficulty increased a lot. We saw a lot of miners concerned, like why is difficulty continuing to go up? Is it gonna eat to my profits, dollar denominated profits? And that simply wasn't the case uh, because price outpaced it. Um, so tracking hash price and familiar yourself, uh, familiarizing yourself with hash price if you're a new miner is probably one of the most important things you can do to understand like what matters and how you should track your profits and mining operation in the state of the mining market and all of those sorts of important questions. Um, but yeah, obviously difficulty is important. It's just also equally important to properly contextualize it with other data, I think.